Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show. I am so happy to be with you today. It's a great day to be live, and I am recording this, as you might be able to hear, from the beaches of Playa del Carmen, or the beach of Playa del Carmen, I suppose, Playa being a beach. Um, and I just thought I'd check in here, from here, because maybe the sounds of the ocean are a nice backdrop for what I want to share today. I'm here with my sisters, my two older sisters and my mom, and we've had this trip planned for, oh, a year and a half. <laughs> so it finally came to pass, and it's gorgeous. And if you're watching, you can see in, in the background how incredibly beautiful it is. And if you're listening, hopefully you can hear it. Um, I want to talk to you today about a really subtle topic. Uh, it's a subtlety in living, uh, and, and it has enormous impact. So, And I say subtle because it's missed a lot, and yet it's had a huge impact on my life. Something I learned from spiritual healer Roy Nelson and, and watching him over the years interact with people and watching him really live a spiritual life and practice spiritual principles and I've learned this from him and so I want to share it with you because I had a few experiences recently about this and the first one is that I've been going to physical therapy for a little while and uh, you know I've I hit my limit I guess for what was prescribed okay for the number of visits prescribed by my doctor I have a herniated disc and I'm very functional so it doesn't hurt me a whole lot except for when I'm putting my pants or underpants on <laughs> so that's when I really feel it or when I cough or sneeze so, so this is how unlimited I am you know and I complete range of motion and very little pain except for those times and the reason why I went to physical therapy is because instead of denying the problem because it, I wasn't in much pain is because I got sick in December and I coughed like crazy like I coughed a lung every single day it was so bad and the combination of coughing which when you're sick feels terrible but the combination of that and then having my whole back spasm every time I cough like literally the nerve would would you know every time I coughed the, the herniated disc would, would um, hit the nerve and so it was excruciatingly painful and so I thought, that's it. Like, I can't pretend this isn't a problem. I, I have to do something about it, even though, you know, I, I'm getting by, you know, generally, if I don't get sick. And I don't want to get sick again and go through this pain. It was so painful. So I signed up for physical therapy. I was serious this time. I've gone before, and I haven't been serious. I've kind of not taken it seriously, not done my exercises at home. I've been kind of a blow off. And this time I thought, that's it. You know, I'm serious because I need the healing. So. I, you know, I'm such a quick fix person. Like, I want to be fixed quick, right? Emotional eaters, we tend to be that way. We, you know, if it's not quick and it doesn't fix us, we're not really interested. But, um, or at least I'm not. So, so this time I'm like, okay, Trish, no pain, no gain. Go through it. Do the physical therapy. Do the, the exercises. And lo and behold, it worked. Like, I started getting better. I could see that I was getting better, feel that I was getting better. But I wasn't 100%, but on the outside it looked like I was. So the people at the physical therapy office were like, you're good, you're done. And I said, no, I'm not done. Like, I still have pain when I put my underpants on in the morning. It's not a lot of pain, but it's there. It's I'm not finished and I need more visits, you know, covered by insurance. And it's not totally covered. I still pay 30 bucks a visit, so, uh, but a lot less than it would be if insurance weren't kicking in. So long story short, they were kind of, the woman who owns the practice was kind of bitchy with me and just didn't see the point in my coming and just sort of resented. I could tell she resented my being there at all because it's not like I've got some terrible injury. She just sort of felt like I was taking up space and she put off the energy. And so, you know, uh, she said, you need to go to the doctor and get more, you know, visits prescribed. And my doctor had said I didn't. I just needed a call. So we had this little tiff. And in that little t exchange, I said, you know, it's very clear to me you don't, you resent my being here. And she's like, that's beside, or she sort of denied it or whatever and, and just said, look, you just have to go to the doctor. And, and, you, it, and, and so that was this uncomfortable exchange that we had. 
but I didn't feel like we were finished. So unfortunately I went back, I went into her office, knocked on the door and said, look, you know, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, you know, your energy is really negative towards me. And she's like, forget my energy. She's like, this is just how it is, blah, 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 blah. Of course, how can one forget somebody else's energy? It's, you know, it's, I'm very attuned to people's energy. And when somebody's energy is bad, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's off putting. I mean, I can feel it from another room. So uh, she doesn't believe that, so she didn't think it mattered what her energy was. Um, but long story short, we, it, we had this a second uncomfortable exchange. She changed, like, it didn't help at all. She didn't change her tune and uh, wasn't, you know, she still believed what she believed. I really was taking up space and shouldn't even be there, blah, blah, blah. So that was it. I left. I called my doctor to get um, an appointment. Um, but I left, uh, to go to a wedding and on the way to the wedding, I just felt like, you know, that was really uncomfortable. And even though I felt like she was wrong to be the way she was and to resent me and to kind of just not be nice. I mean, I am patronizing her business, you know, uh, so even though insurance is, you know, negotiating the rate, I'm still, I'm still bringing her business. And so... I felt really uncomfortable about it and what I did, I talked it over with Roy actually, he was extremely helpful, um, it didn't even say much to me but um, just told me I need to feel good, like it doesn't really, really matter who's right or wrong, I just, need, I just need to be right with myself and so I thought, you know, I'm going to call her and I did, I called her and I said, look, I I just want to tell you, I'm, I'm not, you know, I was really uncomfortable with our exchange and I don't feel good about it. And I just want to tell you that I know it's hard being a business owner. I'm a business owner. I know it's stressful and I'm, I'm sorry to cause you stress, you know, and uh, that's never my intention. It was not my intention. And she just started saying, oh my God, she's like, the insurance thing has been awful this year, blah, blah, blah. It's been really bad. And you know, uh, you know, I have people in here who are really ailing. And so it's hard when other people come in here. She's like, but if you can get the approval from their doctor, go for it. And anyway, and, and then she ended up saying, you know, I really appreciate your calling. She's like, most people just stay mad at me. And I said, well, that's really not it's really not my style, you know, and it's not. I mean, I, I can't afford to be mad at people. I can't afford to, afford to hold grudges and be pissed off. And this is why I called her because I, I really, I need to be right with myself. And so I told her that. I said, it's really important to me that, you know, I, I connect with you and just let you know, I, you know, I'm, it's important that we kind of not settle this, but, but have a conversation and, and, Try to make things right and she really appreciated it and you know I've been there since and I haven't run into her but I felt so much better and I especially felt good that that she was struck by it and and sort of taken aback um, and appreciative so the moral of that story is that even if we really feel righteous and right which we generally do right when we're wrong we feel like we're right and they're wrong <laughs> I'm really good at that. But that's not the end of the story because there are two sides of the story. And her side is that she's really been beaten up by insurance and by, you know, all the different paperwork that she has to do. And, and she has her rules and she has to stick to them and she has to get other people to stick to them. So that's where she's coming from. And it doesn't really matter where I'm coming from or, or whether I think I'm right or not. That even if I, even if I were 100% right, which I'm, you know, not, um, I'm not totally sure how I'm wrong, but I'm just saying that I'm not 100%, nobody's 100% right. There's always two parts, you know, two, two people playing. And even if I were 100% right, making the relationship as good as possible is so much more important than being right. You know, you've heard the saying, you know, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? <laughs> of course, most of us would rather be happy. But, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of wisdom in that. Like, is it really worth it to be right? 
when we could be happy, take it one step further. And that's what happened with the situation. I'm so, so grateful. So glad I called her. So glad I, you know, just let her know that I want to make it right and that I care. You know, and, and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes is so disarming for people. You know, saying, wow, I know it's hard being a business owner. I, I know what that's like. And just that little bit of, just that, just giving it to them a little bit that way of, of, of just, I like, I hey, I've been there. I know it, and I'm sorry. I understand. That, that, that small gesture of compassion can disarm somebody as it did her. And so I just want you to remember that, that, when, when we feel right, you know, it, that's not necessarily the end of the story. You know, there, there, when there's another person involved, we might be able to go a step further. Um, another situation happened here in Mexico with my sister. And, you know, my sister and I go way back. Of course, she's my oldest sister. Um, and she has this thing that she does. I'm not going to go into what it is um, exactly. But she has this way of talking to me that's condescending. And... I, I condescend to her too, you know, I'm, I'm her little sister, but I can, I can be kind of a biatch at times. <laughs> so, but we have history and this particular thing that she does, it's sort of around being PC and kind of superior because um, she feels like she's more worldly or understands the trials of the world and needs to educate me. Anyway, be, you know, whatever. She does this thing and I've told her, it makes me very angry and I've told her several times, don't do that thing. Don't do that with me. Don't do that. And I've been very clear about it. Well, she did it. We were sitting at dinner and she did it. She pulled this con condescending thing with me and, and I got angrier than I usually get when she does it. And I said, don't do that. Like, don't pull that with me. And I was very triggered. And she defended herself and didn't really understand what I was saying or pretended to not understand what I was saying. And it was, um, we went back and forth. And then I looked at my mom and my other sister and said, Are, am I crazy? Like, is, like, do you see this? And my other sister did and tried to explain it to my sister by an, an example she had experienced similarly. So this went on for about 20 minutes and my other sister tried to explain it to her and anyway, I, it came back to me and I said, look, I said, I, I've said something to you several times. I don't appreciate this. And if you do it again, I will react the exact same way. You've been warned. <laughs> no, mind you, I don't talk to most people this way. Like I don't usually don't get angry like that and triggered and uh, I'm usually not that harsh. And so, but with her, it, 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 you know, it, with, you know, when you go the, uh, have such a long experience with somebody that many years, you know, there's stuff. And so even though I've done a lot of work on myself, a ton of work on myself, um, and we're, we're almost a hundred percent, you know, get along. We, we have, our relationship is so much better than it ever has been. But this particular thing, I, I, I really felt triggered by it. I just said, I just, I'm just gonna let you know, I will react the same way. I will not hold back and just, you know, you, you choose. So that was that, and we went on with our evening. But by the end of the dinner, I'd had time to settle down. And I said, before we left dinner, I said, look, I just want to say, and I, I, I want to make sure everybody heard me. I said, Jen, I want to say that I'm sorry I got, I'm sorry I was harsh. Like, I'm sorry I was harsh. Um, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I care about you and I love you. I just needed to express myself here. And she accepted my apology for being harsh. Um, and I think heard that I'm not apologizing for what I said because I needed to say it. So later, my other sister gave me feedback. She said, that was really great. She's like, you, you know, you, you were speaking, you weren't speaking from the wound, you were speaking for the wound. And she, I don't know if she used the word wound, but she just said, you, you know, at first you were triggered, so you were speaking from the wound, but afterwards you were speaking for the wound. Like, like this is the way it is for me, and I don't want to be harsh with you. I don't want to have harsh words with you. And she said, that's really, that's a lot of growth. She said, that was really cool. And I appreciate that feedback. And it just showed me that 
you know, even though, again, I felt I was right and I needed to speak up and I needed to defend myself from her because I, I would have felt bad if I had it. I would have felt mad and resentful. And I can't afford to be resentful. I can't afford to hold resentments and I can't afford to get angry. So what do you do? Like if somebody steps on your toes and you feel the need to say something, but you don't want to be angry, but you are angry. You don't want to hold on to anger. Well, again, like my former situation with my physical therapy gal, I said my piece and then I went back and said, I don't, you know, I don't want to have harsh words and I don't want to hurt your feelings and I'm sorry if I did. And this is something I've learned from Roy and it's been such an amazing lesson. Like he just cares about people's feelings and, and that's more important than whether somebody's right or wrong. And so, because otherwise, if you think back on your own experience, when you have words with somebody or you are resentful about something and you hold on to it, it just clouds everything. It just puts this negative pall on everything. And I didn't want that. I can't afford that. So this is important. And in my work, if you've been in any of my courses, I, I have a saying, which is say what you mean, mean what you say, and don't say it mean. And I generally don't say things mean. I'm a nice person, um, and that's important to me. But even if I say things with a harsh or mean tone, um, I, I have to clean that up or else I have to live with it. And I can't afford to live with it because I'll eat over it. So, um, you know, relationships are tricky. This is a subtle thing, you know, going back. And it, it's not a people-pleasing thing. I hope you hear the difference because I'm still standing for myself and standing by what I say, but letting the person know I care about them and I don't want to have icky energy between us and, and it's important to me that we don't and it doesn't mean that there won't be you know I'll do my part and if they they're not into it and they want to be angry at me that's okay that's I can't do anything about that but I can do what I can do and that is to speak up and say look I care about you and I want us to be on good terms you know and I'm sorry if I offended you so that's what I've learned and, and witnessed in Roy's modeled that for me so many times jillions of times and it's such a beautiful beautiful quality and you know I've tried to adopt this in my own life and I just want to pass it on because sometimes you know when we've been doormats for so long and then we start speaking up for ourselves it's easy to go in the opposite direction and then to become very angry and very righteous and you know really neither is good for our health you know being a doormat certainly is not leads to overeating and being righteous leads to overeating too so I believe this is a, a good medium, a good uh, in-between place. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you relate to this, please comment in the Heal Your Hunger tribe on Facebook and join us there. Even if you don't want to comment, join us because I do a lot of cool things over there in the tribe and I'd love to have you be a part of it. It's free. It's for emotional eaters. Hop over there, Heal Your Hunger tribe and join us. But thanks for listening and I hope you put this into practice. You know, it's so important that we do what we can to make peace with people because that affects our own sense of peace and well-being and of course our relationship with food so I hope this came through loud and clear in every which way <laughs> you can hear the birdies in the back too it's so fun gosh over and out love you so much if you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support insider health info exclusive invites to events and more visit healyourhunger.com